Okay, one of the things, you know, I go to 12-step groups and I'll, you know, I'll say things like, uh, I'm severe, I'm addicted, I'm a food addict or whatever it is, or an overeater, and, uh, and it doesn't mean anything to me. And also, um, like when I've gone to different fellowships or different spiritual groups, uh, quite often in the beginning what will happen is that my, my ego, which is, doesn't want me to carry on talking, but my ego will, um, will see the differences, will see the people it doesn't like or uh, have certain judgments. And um, so then I know it's a process of like letting those resentments uh, through step tens and prayers of the Course of Miracles, whatever, go. And then what happens, I know from long experience, is that those individuals will no longer trigger me. Uh, and when I sort of say, I'm severe, I'm an overeater, it's like, that doesn't mean anything to me as well. It's like, uh, I think that the reason why is it's not said with any belief. It's like, it's like, it's just the lingo in that place. And it's kind of meaningless. And it's like, um, but it's also seen to be um, useful for the newcomers to to hear, uh, or the general fellowship to hear, because the, the purpose and the intention of the group is to get people initially out of denial. You know, because if you say, I'm not an overeater, I'm not an alcoholic, it's very painful to the ego in the beginning to admit one is an alcoholic or one is the thing. Now I believe one can transcend that, so that's no longer um, no longer active the addiction or, or the belief. But uh, it's like you know that's like uh, that's what's done in that place and it has no effect. So it's like being able to say words, but they seem to be meaningless. So it's like uh, so there's 14 years of abstinence with food. It hasn't been like I've been saying, oh, yeah, I'm an overeater and I want to eat food again uh, because I'm saying I'm an overeater. Because it's sort of said, when you sort of say things like I'm an overeater with the intention of aiding people to come out of denial, it's, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't reinflate the ego. Uh, there's a, this other thing of like being spiritually, uh, you know, one of the things of being spiritually superior. I know no longer um, I'm at a higher level of spirituality and I'm not going to say all this spiritually dumb stuff any longer. Uh, but, you know, for me it's like, it's not like that. It's more like if I was to talk to a five-year-old, you know, I'd use like five-year-old languaging and it's like, it's, it doesn't mean I'm not, you know, it doesn't mean that there's any problem with that. It's just, okay, my audience today is a five-year-old so I'm going to speak in five-year-old language, you know, and it's like, okay, I've left the five-year-old and now I'm going to go into a Course of Miracles group and now I'll speak in a different way. It's like, there's no, it's not like if I speak to a five-year-old for too long, I'll become a five-year-old. There isn't that fear, like, oh my goodness, I'm going to, I'm going to go to primary school every day and talk to a bunch of five-year-olds and going to be saying, ga, 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 and going to have the lollipop. And then if I do that for too long, uh, I might become like a five-year-old and I won't be able to speak properly. It's not like that for me. It's like, okay, this is a group of five-year-olds. I'm going to speak in five-year-old language. And then, okay, now it's a Course in Miracles group. I'll speak in a Course in Miracles language. And I'm not afraid of becoming a five-year-old and even using the kind of lingo that five-year-olds are doing. So it's like, and I can actually connect with five-year-olds. I mean, there's a, they, they're kind of cute in their own way. And lovable in their own way. And speaking like a like a baby or a child for a little while is quite fun. But there isn't any fear, like there isn't a fear of that. It's like so meaningless that there's not there's not a fear of becoming. So that's what I sort of see. It. So, you know, in a course of miracle groups, the words and uh, the words are spoken in a different way. With someone on the street, the words are spoken in a different way. It's not not I'm not afraid like, to speak to someone on the street hasn't got any idea of spirituality that I'll become them because it's like it's like an, an automatic adjustment so um, now if there was fear like if I said like I'm an overeater and I'm now afraid I'll become an overeater then 
uh, for me, there's two things. Well, obviously, if there is still meaning or identification, I could become an overeater. Um, but uh, then I could do some work on cancelling the belief I'm an overeater. Okay. It's really the thing of like, does it hold any power, that phrase, I'm an overeater? And for me, it's like totally doesn't mean anything. So I can, it's like, I think I've heard a lot of people say, like, if I say I'm an overeater, I'll become an overeater. But I, I, I think yeah, the thing I would say is like, it's not said in that way. It's not said from a place of fear or a place of I might become that again. It's said from a place of being helpful to others, you know, and speaking in a, in a way to be helpful to others. So I would say that the Holy Spirit protects one from uh, re-energizing it because, you know, the, the intention of speaking the language appropriate to the audience to be helpful, to aid in their uh, release of ego, it, it, it probably gives you some immunity. Whereas there is this... Um, now, I have shared before, like, of course you have to be careful with what you say, but I think, you know, when the intention is spiritual, you know, one is quite defended. Whereas if I said, like, um, something like, I started talking about hyperglycemia, and I was talking about it as if it's real, and it's not really in a spiritual context, um, well, I could become re-identified with having hyperglycemia and becoming, you know, having the shakes while I'm eating cakes or something like that. So that's the one thing. The other thing is, and I think that this is a part of spirituality, is just to, um, I mean, for me it's like, I get this thing where if my ego becomes activated with an individual or a group of individuals, you know, I don't like this group because that person's too loud or whatever it is, then, um, it's like, because I have that, I won't be able to connect to the group. I'll just, my ego will just tell me, like, leave early, and this group is just too loud and, and too not nice. So it'll keep me away. So I just know that, but then if something spiritually is calling me to, to that group, uh, and I want to be part of that group, then all I need to do is then transcend it. Now, sometimes that can be more difficult. I could go to a different group and, and where there's less work to do, uh, and some groups will have more work to do uh, because there might be individuals or things. But in terms of um, what about saying things to people which I don't believe? Like, uh, again, sort of see that as it's not a problem, really. It's because when I speak to people at different spiritual levels and when I speak to people with no spirituality, it's like, you know, it just seems naturally appropriate to speak at their level, and I don't have to change them or, or do anything. So, um, and if I go to a 12-step group, you know, well, I'm not going to say like, uh, and sometimes I would say mystical stuff and make everyone a little bit feel funny in the group, because I feel like, feels like that's the thing to do, to challenge the collective belief systems within the 12-step the, the group. Um, and sometimes I'll do that, um, even though I know it's not the collective consciousness of that group to talk at that level of spirituality. And sometimes I just talk at the level of a thing, because sometimes it just seems like the loving thing to do, to speak in a level they're able to comprehend, to take them just to the next level, but not to push them too far. I mean, like in a 12-step group, I won't say the world is an illusion. <laughs> or you're, you're, everyone's living a dream, you know, it's like... Uh, you know, which is not, you know, it's not going to be, it's not going to be helpful in any way uh, in that. So the thing I'm trying to say is like, it's just doing the spiritual work until, and it, sometimes it's like, okay, I don't want to say that because that's not real for me any longer. But it's like, um, usually if I keep praying or praying, for, like, for example, pray to, pray to the Holy Spirit for a miracle to see it differently. And at a certain point, it's like always the, the Holy Spirit will give me a way of languaging it at a way that's appropriate to the group, where I can say something slightly advanced, but not like bring everyone's back up, you know, like this whole 12-step fellowship is dumb and, uh, you know, just saying I'm an overeater is dumb and this whole world's an illusion and can't you see you're all identified with ego? So you're all wrong, so that's not going to be useful. But then the Holy Spirit will actually tell me, because sometimes I want to say that, but then the Holy Spirit will, will help me to say it in a way that's appropriate to the group. 
you know, to challenge the illusions within the group. So usually at the end, after you know, praying for a miracle to see, see, the, see the 12 steps differently and the people in the group differently, it's like you find a way of connecting and the Holy Spirit will give you the languaging and the capacity and the defense not to pick up things, you know, limiting beliefs that you no longer want to pick up from the group.